magic bullet and hypodermic needle models originate from Harold Lasser's book Propaganda Technique in the World War. In the 1920s and 1930s, aliens attacked on Earth. is a form of propaganda which is used by organizers. We can conclude it by keeping in mind media and audience relations. This theory was actually developed. Observe the effects of propaganda during world wars and events like Orson Welles War of the Worlds broadcast. Warm welcome to all of you. As we know, the role of the mass media in globalization of culture is a contested issue in international communication theory and research. Early theories of media influence commonly known as magic bullet or hypodermic needle theories. According to these theories, the mass media had powerful effects over audiences. The magic bullet and hypodermic needle models originate from Harold Lasser's book Propaganda Technique in the World War, published in 1927. The theory is a linear model of communication and talks about media's power on audience. Theory says the media fired the message directly into audience head without their own knowledge. The message causes the instant reaction from the audience mind without any hesitation which is called magic bullet theory. The media here represents needle, which injects the message into audience mind and it causes changes in audience behavior and psyche towards the message. Theory says that audience are passive and they cannot resist the media message. It's called hypodermic needle theory. Both theories are deals with impact of media messages in audience mind and how audience react towards the message without any hesitation. This theory was actually developed in the 1920s and 1930s after researchers observed the effects of propaganda during world wars and events like Orson Welles War of the Worlds broadcast. First have a look how the message sent to the audience during World Wars. During World War II, Germany and United States used their film industry to build negative propaganda for each other. They produced numbers of films for their audience in which they manipulated with facts to make their audience believe that other side is wrong or bad. At that time, Hitler emerged as a charismatic public speaker and began attracting new members with his speeches. Straight up, I can't tell you how wonderful it feels, how wonderful it's always felt to wear this uniform, being like a soldier of the Nazi movement, with this vision, you know, a man, a leader, lifting us out of the gutter. And going to meetings, everyone's like, together, all thinking the same. It's 
the most wonderful thing I'd ever experienced. And all because of Adolf Hitler. All because of what he offered us. What he could do for us. I mean, we just listened like... Was ich je gesagt habe, der Wiederaufstieg Deutschlands sei nur eine Frage von wenigen Tagen. Immer und immer wieder predige ich, der Wiederaufstieg der deutschen Nation ist die Frage der Wiedergewinnung der inneren Kraft und Gesundheit des deutschen Volkes. I mean, that message, the German people, finding their inner strength once more. After all these years, Germany spat on by the Allies, us feeling bad about the war, the shame of Versailles, and now this man says, come, Germans, join together, refind your strength. I've never heard anything so beautiful. Dieses deutsche Volk ein Vorführen durch eigene Arbeit, eigenen Trotz, eigene Beharrlichkeit, dann werden wir wieder ein Vorstein, genau wie die Väter einst auch Deutschland nicht geschenkt erhielten, sondern selbst nicht schaffen mussten. Without Hitler, the Nazis had nothing. Their vision was of national revival through obedience to a strong leader. But only Hitler had skill and charisma enough to play this role of savior. In July 32, Hitler took 13 and a half million votes, a third of the total. January 33, as leader of the largest party in Germany, he was made chancellor. Within a month, he had the Communist Party banned. Freedom of speech, freedom from arrest, would sweep away. The transformation of Germany into a Nazi one-party dictatorship would begin. Well, on the other side, U.S. President Franklin Roosevelt on live radio asked his fellow citizens to join him in prayer as American troops were launching one of the most dangerous and complicated battles of World War II. Almighty God, our sons, pride of our nation, this day have set upon a mighty endeavor a struggle to preserve our republic, our religion, and our civilization, and to set free a suffering humanity. Lead them straight and true. Give strength to their arms, stoutness to their hearts, steadfastness in their faith. They will need thy blessings. Their road will be long and hard. For the enemy is strong, he may hurl back our forces. Success may not come with rushing speed, but we shall return again and again. And we know that by thy grace and by the righteousness of our cause, our sons will triumph. They will be sore tried by night and by day without rest until the victory is won. The darkness will be rent by noise and flame. Men's souls will be shaken with the violences of war. For these men are lately drawn from the ways of peace. They fight not for the lust of conquest. They fight to end conquest. They fight to liberate 
They fight to let justice arise and tolerance and goodwill among all thy people. They yearn but for the end of battle, for their return to the haven of home. Amen. This showed that at the time of World War II, how did these two leaders addressing their nations? Another great example to understand these assumptions was the radio broadcast in late 30s that made believe aliens attacked on Earth. scientific discovery of our time. The men from the stars, the creatures from the heavens. They're coming. They make them here. We have money. Envious eyes. War of the Worlds, the true story. California. Professor Indelkoffer, speaking at a dinner of the California Astronomical Society, expressed the opinion that the explosions on Mars are undoubtedly nothing more than severe volcanic disturbances on the surface of the planet. We continue now with our piano interlude. As we know that advertising is a form of propaganda which is used by organizations to influence audience. Advertisements published in World War II were adapted to the environment of the time. In particular, the work of women in various advertisements and the message of the advertisements given during the war were presented with interesting copy. Somehow, in advertising, magic bullet theory is still study as a tool to get the attention of their audience. So we can see how advertisers sell sort of ideas and appeals to the customer. This theory has been largely discredited by academics because of its suggestion that all members of an audience interpreted messages in the same way and are largely passive receptors of messages. This theory does not take into account intervening cultural and demographic variables such as age, ethnicity, gender, personality, 
or education that cause us to react differently to the media messages we encounter. So, we can conclude it by keeping in mind media and audience relations that those who believe reality television shows actually portray reality hold some assumptions of the magic bullet theory. But remember, this theory was developed at a time when newspapers and radio was the actual medium available for mass audience. That is all for today. See you soon. Keep watching our TV. Magic bullet and hypodermic needle models originate from Harold Lasfer's book, Propaganda Technique in the World War. In the 1920s and 1930s, aliens attacked on Earth. Advertising is a form of propaganda which is used by organizers. We can conclude it by keeping in mind media and audience relations. This theory was actually developed. Observe the effects of propaganda during world wars and events like Orson Welles' 